Aren't you interested in learning breakthrough wealth building strategies, such as how to flip a home in less than two weeks using other people's money with no real estate license, or how to build a low cost home based business? You can discover how to take passive income from any source and invest it into real estate, stocks, or business to become financially independent investing in any market with Residual Roads Business Institute. Collaborate with Andre and other Residual Roads advisors to create a free action plan and start implementing strategies today. Go to www.residualroads.com or email info at residualroads.com. Welcome to the Investing Uncensored podcast. You've been searching for different ways to become financially independent or generate passive income to live out your life's purpose as you've seen others do it, but need insight on how. Well, get excited because here you'll discover the tips and resources to fulfill that need. Andre Stewart has spent more than a decade successfully making it happen for himself and others. This is the Investing Uncensored podcast. And now here's your host, Andre Stewart. Welcome to another episode of Investing Uncensored. I'm your host, Andre Stewart. And today I want to talk to you guys about the number one principle that I've discovered over the course of writing three books. I mean, if people don't follow me, I've written three books over the past two years. And one is about mindset. One has been about real estate and one has been about business. And that's kind of what I cater to on this podcast. But first I'll say, I'm not going to scream at you guys today. (laughs) I know it a lot of times. It seems like I'm screaming in my podcast, but I'm just passionate about trying to help you guys out. So the number one principle that I've discovered, you know, since I've been writing these books and it's been over the course of decades, years, man, even back to the Mesopotamian days in the, you know, first civilization on earth, it's always been the same principle, even with slaves. So the number one principle that is the one that people use to I guess I would say ascertain value for themselves, and that would be provide value to other people. If you think about all the people that have generated wealth, what have they done? They, in some form or fashion, provided value, and that would be what they would get paid. You are only as valuable as what someone's willing to pay for you. So for anybody that's trying to become rich or generate a lot of income or be financially independent, whatever your goal is, you have to figure out how to add value to a large number of people. Not one person, a large number of people, because if you obviously the more people you get, the more people you have willing to pay for whatever value you provide. So if you look even back, let's go back to the beginning of civilization or just let's not go that far back because some of you might not even know that, but just look at slaves. If you look at the slave trade, the slaves that got sold for the high, the highest dollar were the slaves that provided the most value to the farmer. You know, it was a person that could go out there and maybe stay on the farm all day long or can pull four cows or whatever it was. This particular slave that was being sold happened to be the strongest slave or the more or the smartest slave or the one that did the best at whatever their job was. And so that's that goes back to any any time in history. There have been slaves since the beginning of time, like pyramids were built with slaves. Like you can just go back in history and know that it's it, slaves have always existed. But the value obviously became an issue when you start selling people for profit. But I'm just giving you guys a, as an example you could see the value in even something as simple as that. So if you if you fast forward and you go to today's time and you look, you can get, it's funny because I saw a guy, I was in the grocery store one time and I was probably in my 20s and I saw a guy who was like 7'1". He had a military uniform on. He was in, a, he was in the army. And I'm like, this dude is basically wasting his talent or his value, that was my opinion. I saw the value in his height because he was 7'1". Because if you look at an NBA player, obviously look at Shaq. Shaq is 7'1". And look at what Shaq did with his height. He saw that he realized his height and his his strength was a, was obviously a gift to him. So what did he do? He mastered the gift. He took his height and he took his skill of basketball or, or whatever the case, and he turned it into something that people were willing to pay for. So not only was he tall and not only was he strong, but he took that strength 
and basically honed the craft and like, you know what? A lot of basketball players are tall. Whatever Shaq did, him being 7'1", he decided to make millions of dollars being 7'1". This other guy that's 7'1", he decided to go in the military. He could be providing value in other ways in the military that I don't know about. But I do know that he's not a millionaire. You know what I mean? So the difference is this guy, Shaq, saw the value in his height and his strength, and he decided to do something with it. Not saying that obviously he had to have an interest in basketball, but this guy that's 7'1", if he were to, you know, do some research and see like, you know what, me being tall, I could take this and hone my skills in a particular sport and become a millionaire. That's not what he wanted to do, but understanding the value, two people of the same height, of the same stature, chose to go two different paths and they now have a different value and they both have the same i'm pretty much they both have the same asset which is height but one used it in a different than the other person did and it goes to the same thing like if you look at all these businesses out here what do they do for people they provide value all these businesses are are products that provide value you know what i mean and so the the key to manifestation of the life that you want is figure out what your value is that you can provide to society. No one knows what that is, but you. And I talked on the last podcast that I did about having an expertise. Most of these people, if you look at anybody, look at someone who's on Instagram and they got 300,000 followers. Whoa, or let's go with a million. Whatever the case is, the value that that person has is that they have a following and people are willing to pay that person to wear their product or display whatever they want them to on their Instagram or talk about it. The value that this person provides is that they have a follower or that that, is that they have followers and a lot of them, not that this person is any more special than the next person. They just have a lot of followers and that's what the value is. That person that got those followers had to do something, right? They had to go, they had to create content. They had to do something in order to get those followers. That just didn't happen overnight. So that person saw Instagram as a valuable product for them to generate income. You see what I'm saying? So there's always going to be some medium that provides value, whether it be you or the platform or whatever you're using to provide that value. But the key is being able to mass produce it on a large scale that people are willing to pay for it. So now what you have to do as yourself is now go back, go back. For me, my value was knowledge of information just through research on business, working at the bank, finance, and me being able to communicate that to someone easy, or just like I'm doing this podcast, me being able to disperse knowledge in different ways, whether it be through books, whether it be through creating a a mobile application or me doing this podcast, my value is me being able to give this information to everybody and everybody can go and pick it up. People are willing to pay for my books. People are willing to come on this podcast and me get ad revenue from it. People are willing to download the app and use it and, you know, get loans or buy properties. So that's where my value lies. So you guys need to figure out what that is. And I'm able to produce it on a large scale because of I wrote books. So now I have intellectual property that people are willing to pay for. The more listens that I get, the more downloads that I get, the more people want to advertise on my on my episodes. Same thing with the mobile application. People want to download the app because it makes their life easier when it comes to investing. People want me as their coach to teach them how to start a business or learn how to get into real estate. So they pay me for that. You see what I'm saying? Elon Musk is trying to save the world. I love referencing Elon Musk because I think he's doing a lot of great things with Starlink, with Tesla. We're trying to take people to another planet with, you know, trying to keep communication open with acquiring Twitter. And I I know that he understands a lot of the same things that I've done with my research with understanding how the mind works. So I appreciate him from a different level of just not him being a businessman, but the way he thinks. Because now with me writing books, I kind of understand his thought process because, you know, doing certain things and doing a lot of research on trying to write certain books, you start to understand the world in a different light, which listening to Elon Musk I now understand what I didn't get before when I thought he talked 
you know, with some nonsense, but like, no, he's just a really intelligent person because he did his research. So the value that Elon Musk brings is, you know, all the things that you guys see that he does. And that goes for Jeff Bezos or any, you know, Facebook, what it does for communication and bringing people together. And same thing with Instagram. All these things provide value to people in different ways, but they're able to do it on a massive scale. And that's how people become billionaires. They don't become billionaires because someone gave them some money. It's there. They came up with something that provided a substantial amount of value and they did it on a mass scale. Have you ever thought to yourself, I wish I could get into real estate investing. You can change this as quickly or as slowly as you want to now. Imagine yourself networking and making new connections in real estate globally or buying an investment property in a market or country that fits your needs. People do. They know what I'm talking about. And now you can too with InvestFAR. Connect and join the network. Remote investing made safe and easy. One of the things that you guys could do, you know, I think you guys should try to figure out what value that you can bring to society. Not one person, not two people. These people that have these major corporations that are billionaires, they're they're shaping society, whether it be good or bad. That's what they're doing. And so anyone, again, if you make it as small as the Instagram model, you know what I mean? Her value, in her opinion, is her looks. And so she took that and she honed on and and then she 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 or her, he took it to another level, right? And so they. Mass produced this by doing a bunch of photos, posting them on Instagram, creating YouTube channels. So now everyone is able to tap into the value that they saw. They believe in themselves that much that they decided to go out there and take a bunch of pictures of themselves and they created the value. They it's like market makers, market makers. You know, that's what they do with like crypto or stock markets. If you don't know what a market maker is, look it up. But people become their own market maker in essence when it comes to creating value. So these people that believe in themselves to the degree of of, of starting a YouTube channel or they, they feel like the information that they have to share is worthy of other people taking note of it and being you know, willing to pay for it. So this is kind of what you guys need to figure out. That's the number one principle, man. If you go back throughout the history of time to the start of civilization, there was always going to be someone. There, it, there was always inequality. Inequality has always existed. It will always exist. People need to get away from that, right? So the people that created the pyramid, obviously the kings and the pharaohs were, had more money than the people creating the pyramid. You see what I'm saying? So if you, t if you take it that far back, you will see that there was inequality back then. So you guys just need to figure out, don't worry about what other people are doing. Don't worry about your skin tone. Like if, if a black person or whatever skin color you are, if there is another person out here that looks just like you and they're making money, then obviously you can do the same thing. There's no different. You can sit here and be like, well, this person's holding me back or this. There is nothing. If that's the case, then all the other black people or all these other Hispanics or whites or Asians or whatever, they wouldn't be making money. If, if there was something that was holding a certain demographic back, then that particular demographic wouldn't have anybody successful in it. So it's a belief system that's more than likely holding anyone back from not being successful. Because if you have a business, when you do your tax returns, it doesn't say what color the business owner is. It just goes based off of numbers. So nothing knows, no, no, no computer knows when you have a business, the, the business don't, the, the computer don't care. The computer want to put in how much money are you going to pay me? How much money do you owe me? That's what matters. So if you can provide value, I was talking to one of my friends and I was telling him, in essence, look at Jordan or Sidney Poitier. Look at all these people that were black back in history when the slavery and all these other things were, you know, a huge roadblock in minorities being successful. But, you know, Jordan went back in the slavery days, but I'm using Jordan as an example because he made a lot of money in a time where a lot of people, you know, even Muhammad Ali, a lot of athletes have made a lot of money in times where people were, you know, looking at minorities a certain way, but the people saw the value in what they brought and what they did was bring money to these arenas and pack out these arenas. So, you know what, the value that they provided 
overshadowed this person's belief system because it made them money. They could care less what color any of these people were that were generating them income, right? And so they didn't talk crazy behind, in, in front of Jordan's face or Muhammad Ali's face. They might have done it behind his back, but they're like, you know what? I got to keep my opinions to myself. If I want to call this dude a certain name, I can't call it to his face because if he does... You know what I mean? That's gonna take that's gonna take money out of my pocket. So, you know, I mean, a lot of times, especially now in these times, money supersedes a lot of different things. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, but that's just kind of what it is. So if you can provide value, no one really cares, man. No one really cares what color you are, right? If they see the value in what you provide, they're gonna be willing to pay for it because that's obviously something that they can't do for themselves. So they're willing to go out and pay for it. That's the number one principle that I think people need to understand is. You need to figure out the best way that you can add value to a lot of people. You know what I mean? And, or how to duplicate whatever it is you could do on a small scale. You know what I mean? And so ideally with me, I can only reference myself with this because I know myself and I know what I did and I know where I came from and I know what I'm doing. I, I used to think that I had to wear, because of my skin color and because of me growing up in the South, I used to think that I had to wear glasses to overcompensate, to try to look intelligent or or try to carry myself a certain way just so I could fit in or just so I can be like, okay, well, he's not like the rest of them, right? Just because I put on some glasses, I felt like that would mask my skin color because they would see me differently. But in all essence, what they wanted what was inside of my head. They wanted what was inside of my brain. You know what I mean? They, the value was inside of me, not what, what I looked like. And so over time, as I started progressing and started my own business, and I realized me being working with different nationalities, me working with people overseas, they only care about what I can provide, right? They only care about what I can give them. They only care about the resources that they can get from me, which is fine, right? That's in essence what everyone does. Everyone is out here and they, if they, if you have a relationship with anyone, and it, it, you're benefiting from it in some form. Somebody in the relationship is benefiting from it. Whether it be you or the person on the other end, there's a benefit for someone in the relationship. I mean, really sit and think about it. Think about any relationship that you've had, male or female, once the benefit for you or the other person starts to run out, the communication starts to die down. Like you don't hang out as much. It starts to die off. That's just what it is. You know what I mean? It, it, it could just be you benefit from communicating with this person about your day or you linking up this person to go to the gym to work out or something, right? It's just someone to talk to. So there's got to be something. There's always going to be something. So you guys just need to understand the number one principle to become successful in getting money or becoming a millionaire is realizing what value that you can provide on a mass scale. And I know we all have something that we can provide. You know what I mean? Like I, I've said this before and I said it in the book that I'm writing. We're all put on this earth for a specific thing. Just because you might have the same idea as me, we're still different people. So you might come up with something, but I guarantee you my process or the way I design it is going to be different. You know what I mean? So there's there's going to always, we, we all put here for a specific purpose. Every creation was put here for, I mean, if you go to the zebra that gets eaten by the lion, this zebra's whole purpose was to probably come here, procreate, create some more zebras so they can get eaten by the lion so the cycle can continue. We all have a reason for being here. We just need to figure out what that is. And once you figure that out, that's where you're going to figure out what your value is. That's when you really figure out your real reason for being. And I know everyone has to have at some point in time thought like, why am I here? You know what I mean? So yeah, once you discover that, then you're going to really understand how to really make money. Once you identify your purpose, man, that's when you figure out where your value is. And that's how you generate this, you know, million dollar lifestyle or whatever kind of lifestyle you want. And I don't think people get that. And so when you go back, I, I, I remember this one guy saying, if you want to create, if you want to manifest certain things in your life, use the laws of physics, which is correct. I talk about this in a book. I'm not going to get into it on this podcast right now, but look at quantum physics, do research on quantum physics. And if you, if you look at that, and you'll really understand on a large scale uh, on what we're here to do and, and how we're going to manifest that. So, guys, I just want to come in here and do a real quick podcast on things I've been thinking about lately because I see so many people out here struggling. So you see some people have great lives and some people like, man, they're hating on people that have those good lives. And it's like, don't ask why, ask how. Right. So once you start to understand that for yourself. 
and you get the reason why you're here, then your life is more likely going to turn out like that person's life that you're over here hating on. So, yeah, man, I just want to get on here and, and do a quick podcast because culturally we're heading down the wrong path and it's only increasing as the inequality gap grows larger and larger. So, I mean, one of the biggest ways to decrease that gap is if everybody starts to tap into what their true value is, right? And then we'll all start benefiting from each other and we'll all be willing to pay each other for different things. And that's how you bridge the inequality gap. So, you know, being mad at this person for them figuring out what their purpose in life was and then delivering something that everybody wants doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't really get that concept of being upset that someone is providing a service to a lot of people that they're benefiting from it. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like everybody needs to figure out what their gift is and what their service that they can provide is. And then it'll, it'll be different, but the likelihood of that happening is super slim, but I'm doing my job. And like I say, what my purpose is, is to try to share the information that I've learned over the course of time and through my own experiences and trying to provide as much value to society as I can. And this is what I'm doing. Take some time, man. You got the holidays coming up. You know, you got a new year coming. Take some time to figure out what your life's purpose is. You know what I mean? Figure out what you want to do. Figure out why you're here. Once you figure out your why, the rest of this stuff take care of itself. So if you're going to do some New Year's resolutions and, and you know, try to start the new year right, figure it out what you're going to do for the next 10 or 15 years or until you expire. All right, guys. Take care. See you in the next episode. Aren't you ready to start a business or grow your real estate investing portfolio? If you answered yes, allow Andre and the expert advisors at the Residual Roads Business Institute to fast track and put you on a path to full-time investing. The greatest transfer of wealth in our lifetime is occurring over the next few years, and you can take advantage if you know what to look for. In order to be successful at real estate investing, you need to learn how to leverage your current resources to generate quick money, big money, and retirement money. Let Residual Roads advisors craft a plan to get you through these phases using little or no money in six months or less. Don't wait for a job, create one for yourself and others. Go to residualroads.com for mentorship and for our free course, go to residualroads.thinkific.com.